Welcome for those who are here. I am so mengantuk today. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Off day man. Off day tak tengantuk. <laughs> What? We will we'll wait for a few more minutes. For yeah, sure. More, more people to come. The one hour clock starts now. Is it? The one hour time? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. At least I time. It's not really one hour tau. I think so it is, okay. It's about like two minutes before it ends. I can call timer on my side. Right, and right. From hari tu yang with Changmin tu, uh, I tried, I wanted to do countdown. Then I eat until one until it stops. But 15 seconds, when, when it's down to 15 seconds, it just cut me off. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in any case, we'll try finish up two fifty-five, five minutes early, ten minutes early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those yeah, that's my. Uh. <laughs> okay, those those who are here, please let us know our audio testing audio, our video. Or so far, it looks good. This is this looks really yeah. good. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, and the sun. Quite shiny today, inshallah. Yeah. yeah. Stay, stay shine <laughs> until we wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. Audio is clear. All right, awesome. Right, cool, cool. It seems good, awesome. Mm -hmm. For those who Offer are here uh, uh, throughout the video, if you have any questions, again, uh, you can write it in the comment or beside the the comment chat bawah tu beside it, there's the like a Square tiny box with a question mark. It will be easier for me to read from the question mark punya box too. So if you have any questions, it's better to sumbat your question there lah. Thank you, Shah. Say, wow, I love your hits come. <laughs> is Usha somebody you know? Yes, Usha is my high school friend. Oh. Since <laughs> Since form one. Yeah, yeah. Asuntin. Hello. Oh, KX is here also. KX waiting for your next session. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I am taking more sessions, tapi probably not Insta Live really lah. Nak try something like another medium. Start yeah, yeah. That's that's nice, definitely. Mm. I think there's a possibility that you know with the whole community of scientists, artists, or, you know, people of the same interest, they would really like to share and comment or ask something live, right? Opposed to typing it out. Yeah. That'll be cool. Banyak peminat, uh, my friends, peminat Safai, peminat <laughs> uh, staff I have new crush with, uh, Jolene. <laughs> oh, yeah. And all your Oh my god, yeah. Awesome, man, awesome. <laughs> Yuri is great. She got, more, she got more talks coming out. I think so tonight, there's, but I think so the full code, limited you know, space for her talk too. But they are like, if you follow the page, you know. Okay, I said, yeah. I think it's a great platform and chance for me to raise the awareness, especially in the campus. Right, okay. Okay, okay I'm going to report to Yuri, maybe. Yuri has got a crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you guys. Please, I, I guess with the whole new community, you can uh, definitely reach out to different uh, regions, Langkawi, um, Selangor, Shaklam, yeah. Yeah. Alright, it's already 2.01, pass, pass on me, it is sorry, start number. Alright, so today we are with uh, Balkis, our last session, and uh, we're going to end it with a very cool topic, nature expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, so Rimba Project, um, Balkis approached Rimba Project some time ago to uh, collaborate and uh, do her super awesome cyanotype or sun printing art in the Rimba Ilmu Botanic Garden. Um, I think so I would like for Balkis. Oh, there, there's an example there. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, this is something. <laughs> <laughs> I would like uh, Balkis to explain more later. Lah. So, um, before that, again, the... The very important question. 
the first and most important question in the history of mankind in this era. How are you keeping up with MCO? Okay, if you ask me first week, I think I wouldn't know. I did not function quite at all. You know, just it was kind of like a very weird time, you know, for you suddenly to be forced to um, lock down. And um, I guess I wasn't really much productive. So it was just eating, sleeping, cooking and all that. But yeah, um, I think after a while now, it's like more than a month, right? So Alhamdulillah, it's going good. Um, I've always been working from home since last year. So it's truly helped me to kind of manage and block my time better. Yeah, so more positive, I suppose, than the negative, actually, yeah. Can you people also start being adapted to staying at home? Like, like, yes, like, yeah, like, definitely. People got comfortable with doing a lot of crazy stuff in the house. <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. Alamak, we're, my, the idea is lagging. Already? Uh, okay, lah, start lah, lagging all the problem. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'd like to yeah. uh, introduce yourself to some, probably some of viewers are like naturalists. So here's an artist coming in and probably there are more artist people. Just introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, my name is Balkis Tajali. I'm a designer and self-taught artist. Um, and I have my own studio called Sun Print Studio. Um, I worked as... Uh, I work in the architecture and interior field for five years before moving to Pulau Langkawi, to my hometown, to open my practice. So ever since then, I started to do um, sun printing, something like this. Um, I started to organize um, workshops. Uh, yeah, ever since late last year. I think first time with the Flora Festival in Shah Alam. And then um, I think, was it the last one? Well, and then the first collaboration with um, UM Rimba, um, with UBI. Wow. So it definitely opens up a whole different new world of art uh, entirely for me. Yeah. So I'm hoping that in the future, I don't know what, it might be sun printing, it might be something else entirely, but I'm, I'm glad that it's taking up in the different shapes and form. And my sister is currently asking a question. <laughs> MCO emotionally not available. <laughs> a lot of people saying hi, hello, Iman is here. Hello, hello. Hi everyone. All right. Uh, oh yeah, before before I continue with like other questions that I have for you, Ken, like I'm really curious on how um you as an artist is adapting to MCOs about uh like environmentalists, they they they're doing like a variety of ways lah. Like one one is doing uh, all this. Okay, everyone is adapting online, yep. online yeah. um, communications. And then other yang buat macam like a rainforest, virtual rainforest experience oh. where they show like photos and audio, and then just let people interact with one another. That kind of stuff. That's from Greensmith. I I watch them. So how how are uh, like? So, but you you are always out doing workshops. For your yeah, art. yeah. So how are you adapting to like um this? Mm, let's see. Um, well, my work has always been half. Well, you can say half physically going out there workshop or like going for an art booth, art festivals, um, and then the other half would be more on producing the artwork, uh, either through sun printing, actual painting. Um, and ex like experimenting with new mediums and researching, reading. So um, I guess for throughout the MCO, I've been doing just that, uh, which is more on like the work home base kind of thing. But I'm, because I also run like a business, you know, financially, I also get uh, most of my income through that. So um, I've been trying to go into e-commerce platform now. So yeah, that's definitely in the works, um, but I maybe not too soon, I guess. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, some, probably some of you guys might be wondering what is Sinotypes. 
and sun printing or sun printing. Um, so could Bakis uh, explain what cyanotype and probably a bit of history of cyanotype? Okay. Um, right. So cyanotype is uh, actually sun print is part of the process of cyanotype. And cyanotype is a photographic um, process uh, to create uh, this kind of cyan blue images. And like the namesake, sun print, you actually have to harness the sunlight, the ultraviolet light, to create this. So um, historically, this is actually one of the earliest form of photograph, um, I guess, photographic system, photographic process. Um, is that it was founded or discovered by um, this English guy called Sir John Herschel. He's a scientist and an astronomer um, who created this to actually reproduce notes. So, um, yeah, but it actually got popularized a year later or a few years later by a family friend called Anna Atkins. She's a botanist and she sort of like pioneered the way for um, photographic system to be in scientific investigation and illustration. So yeah, she's the first, considered the first female photographer actually. So cool. That's the history of um, cyanotype. And um, is that enough? <laughs> so, uh, is that enough guys? Or do you guys want more? Uh, okay, how about I show you guys the, the demonstration? Maybe it's easier? Okay. All right. Um, okay, I'll just show you first. Um, so one, they are like the main... I, I, see, I see some questions coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll go to your questions later. We'll see how Bakis... Um, Bakis will show some demo first. Lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, the main ingredients for cyanotype is actually this two um, solution. Maybe you can't see it, but, um, oh, neighbor. <laughs> um, so the first one is the potassium ferric cyanide. I know, cyanide. And the other one is ferric ammonium citrate. Yep, ammonium. Guys, please don't bring this to flight. <laughs> Night flight. Um, yeah, but these two chemicals is actually the least um, toxic uh, materials for photography. So if you use like silver, ammonium, something for like black and white photography, that's actually more dangerous. But I'm sure with today's um, technology and discovery, they are less toxic than before. But it's quite safe for a cyanotype to be um, used by the kids. Just make sure adults are there and you wear gloves. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just make this camera go down and I'll show you guys. Oh, wow, this is so cool. Okay, it's not but maybe it's just the shadow. Okay, first up. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, <laughs> what you do is actually do like a one-to-one -one ratio, like a half-half ratio with these two solutions. So, uh, yeah, I've already pre-mixed it. So you can just like use take only a few that you need for um for the day for the first two hours because it doesn't work well after two four hours so you mix it and you can use any brush but here i'm using um, a foam brush yeah you just swipe 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 and it's totally up to you, up to your own creativity, um, whether you want to draw, make something a little extra, you want a bit more drippy, you know, anything. Yeah, so it's fun. It's, it's a blue dye, but this one, it comes out yellow first. Yes, it comes out yellow first. Correct. So you actually need the sunlight to uh, make it blue, actually. So at the moment, this is just um, potassium ferric cyanide and just ferric ammonium citrate. So the component is actually just on top over each other. It's not yet mixed. Until we would bring in the lovely friend water H2O <laughs> and then it would, yeah, definitely um, uh, bring out the, uh, what is call it, Prussian bloom. Okay, so you keep this dry for a few minutes and assuming Few minutes is already 
over. You find any object of your um, liking, like a plant. Here is a purple hydrangea. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> No, I'm, not, I'm not that great at plant, but probably we have plant people here who can help to identify this plant. Mm -hmm. Do you see so, <laughs> so at least from what I googled on my own yesterday, this is purple hydrangea. And um, I think if you put it in an acidic soil, it would turn purple. And if it's in an alkaline soil, it will turn blue or white or pink. Yeah. Or maybe it's the other way around. <laughs> so it's almost like a, like a, what is that red cabbage? It's like a, it can be like a alkaline pH indicator. So, okay, assuming that we have already dried, you place your um, florals, your objects, you can put rocks, you can put shells, um, anything that you think ha that you want to um, like produce images. But I would recommend something like plants because it has a lovely opacity and translucency to it. And you never know, you actually might see something else that you can never see with your naked eye. Yeah. And what you need to do is get something that is transparent, something that is preferably a little bit um, heavy. So you need to clamp it. So the more it is closer to the, to the print, to the sensitized paper with the solution. The more clear it is, the more sharper the image. So you can get clips and then just clamp it. And then you put it under the sun. So you put it under the sun for like about, I would say, I don't know, today's um, look out outside of your window. Is it sunny? <laughs> Do you think there's a lot of UV? Is it cloudy? So assuming you don't want to get overexposed, if it's sunny, you just try out at least between 5 to 15 minutes. Or if you want to be a little bit more precise, something like a sun print test strip. So this thing is what I did during the monsoon season last year in Angkali. So the first five minutes, Okay, so I swiped first with the solution. And then what I did was, okay, first five minutes, open up. Oh, sorry, first five minutes I opened. And then I moved on and moved and moved. And then you'll get 25 minutes exposure when you wash it. This is 15, 10, and five minutes. So you, you kind of like make your own hypothesis that the more the longer you put it out there, the more bluer it is. Yeah. But this is depend because sometimes even a sunny day can, um, can be very cloudy. So you just have to play around. And this is some other days in a sunny day in Langkawi. Yeah. This is sunny days, but you see there's not much of a difference, right? It's because the cloud keep on coming over uh, and then keep on disappearing. So you don't see much of a Yeah. But anyway, um, on a good day, you can have clear difference about it. So, magic. I've already pre-done. I've done um, the first... I did early in the morning. Ta-da! So this is purple hydrangea as well. And... Um, so slowly, once you actually expose it under the sun, it will slowly turn blue or dark brown. And you know it's been reacting to the sun. And what you do is take your time to enjoy opening up the leaves. <laughs> and, um, okay, let's make this fast. Okay. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you'll notice the parts where I place the flowers, they are still yellow in color. So this is the original color of the solution. Yeah. So um, I go uh, earlier on, I just put like masking tape to create this um, frame. So that's like um, totally to your preference. But yeah, I'm, I'm taping that now. 
these guys cannot be done one hour. <laughs> How to speed up? Oh gosh, it would be nice to do it in one hour in reality, but for a complete immersion of the experience, three hours or more. And in beautiful places like Rainbow Elmo in UM. <laughs> mm, you can stay the whole day there. <laughs> uh, answering to some of the questions, what is your favorite plant? It's ferns. Ta-da! Ferns really okay. like a nice um, like printed image on the sun print. Sorry? Yeah. Ferns, your yeah, shape too. Yeah. It's really nice when it's printed on it. Yes, let me reach out my hand and I have a problem. Oh, because of MCO. Can <laughs> <laughs> you read it? <laughs> Corona. Lol! <laughs> it's a Corona cigar. <laughs> but uh, of course, I don't uh, smoke. But anyway, <laughs> random things I found. Eh. Why are we doing this? Ah, this is one of the ferns, pop ferns. But of course, my all time favorite is, okay, I don't know its name, but oh, yeah. Okay, let's go behind and wash this together. Okay. Okay, bear with me, I have not test this thing out. No, no. Sambil tu, I, I look at the comment because got ada few few questions coming up. Yeah. Yes, yes, you please do. You can ask me a lot. Can, can. Oh, oh. Try point. Okay. Is sun printing or painting or photography? Right? This is, it's the photography printing. But without using the actual camera, yeah. Okay, so I'm going all fancy today. You can just use plain water, but I'm using three types of solution, which is the first bath is a diluted acid. I use um. And then this one is our magic bath. I will tell you what's inside it later. Ooh, chlorophyll printing. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay. All right. Okay, you're supposed to wear gloves here, but uh, my last not go for another <laughs> to take it. But beware, guys, wear gloves if you have sensitive hands. So, first bath. This is the... So... Yes, this is the diluted acid. So you'll start seeing um, this more white now. So you know that the solution is washed off. Okay, this is way easier. Oh yeah, I did this for like 15 minutes at 11 a.m. So I'm not too sure whether the UV was good enough. Okay, so you start seeing Okay, let me just check whether the yellow, okay, the yellow is still around. So you can do this for like two to three minutes. I would usually use bekas tapawai makanan lah. So you don't waste much water when you run it under the tap. Okay, assuming this is done. Okay, you already start seeing the petals, the translucency of it. Yeah. So why I enjoy sun printing is is something unexpected. So you're like collaborating with nature. You know, you need the sun, you need the water, you need the acid, you need the alkali. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to neutralize it. You don't want it to still have the vinegar. So you wash it on your clean water. If you're lazy like me, you can just... Keep it bathed for like five minutes, then you do other stuff. That's very fine. It's quite no problem. Okay. All right. Next. Magic. Magic bath. 
in which I like to call it instant gratification. <laughs> you know, all millennials can. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually more blue. Becoming darker, yeah. Yeah. So what happens when you add hydrogen peroxide is that it would um, quicken the oxidization process. If not, you wait this part for 24 hours or more, so it would be the final bloom, like ones on the left. So I'll just immerse all of this. Yeah. Magic trick! Voila! Magic! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what's good about cyanotype is they are very much archival. And if you use alternative like um, juice, uh, like beetroot juice, pan juice that is sensitive to light, it can still produce a print, but it's not archival. So it would um, definitely, I would say, decompose. Is it the word? Mm. Not decompose. It definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> organic material would um yeah uh, I don't, that's not the word not decompose but anyway yeah it doesn't it's not archival hence why i'm currently also trying to work on some kind of a hybrid with sunprint cyanotype as well as a plant-based um solution so yeah um yeah so that's that let's keep it dry um yeah we're done guys <laughs> Okay, um, the, I think so somewhere at your area there, the line a bit slow, so uh, some, some are saying that video a bit choppy. Oh. Okay, degree. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so things, um, so the, I would say the more eco-friendly version of cyanotype is antotype. Um, yeah, so that's where you can get the color like these beetroots. It will get purple. Um, if you use onion or turmeric, you will get the yellow brown um, version of sunprint. Yeah. So yeah, do you want to go on, on a little bit of a studio tour? Uh, let's answer some questions first, and then we do the studio tour. Okay. okay. I've been like practicing what I say and I get too much, <laughs> too fast and it's over. Okay, Cikgu just said that. Um, Iman, Iman is here. Iman asks, what makes you interested in sun printing? What makes me interested? Um, I would say uh, I was actually having a hard um, time uh, when I was my final days of working in the architecture industry, you know, a lot of stress and, and it took a toll on me health-wise, um, mentally, you know. So I had to um, quit my job just to, because I don't know for how long I want, I'm getting better. Uh, so yeah, I just uh, went back to my hometown, completely trying to, you know, go out, slow living, going back to nature, um, yeah, and I just, uh, I re I learned actually um, Sinotype earlier on during, if I'm not mistaken, it's April, or was it March 2019? It wasn't that long. But I feel that the process itself somehow is like very therapeutic. You have to take your time to like, oh, go foraging to the garden, you know, quite romantic lah. I'm like, you know, la la la, basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, that kind of um, the process that you've seen just now, but prolong that into three to four hours being in a garden, being in your backyard. And that's kind of like my childhood um, when I was uh, small as a kid. I like to go out, tangkap, belalang, ladybugs. I like to pretend to fish in the monsoon drain, um, <laughs> you know, 
I know there's no Lombong lah, but there was like a man-made lake somewhere right behind, um, community um, Sha'alam. And um, yeah, um, I started because I just needed to heal myself and through, actually through nature, yeah. Through, through art, but more than that is through actually doing art with nature, yeah. Mm. Iman also asked, do you do workshop? Yes, I do workshop, uh, not online though, but um, definitely after MCO is over. Um, maybe I'll go right back to Taman Tugu, which is one of the workshops that got cancelled due to MCO. Mm. Uh, but if not, um, come to my neighbourhood in Sha'alam and I'll bring you guys to my childhood haunt. And yeah, we'll have fun, picnic, and talk about nothing or everything under the sun. <laughs> Yeah, we, we also plan kind yeah. of what, like, talk, like, to run a talk here with us. But, um, yalah, MCO tak jadi. Mm. The natural die, something like that, right? The... Yeah, that's something. <laughs> new project. <laughs> new project, yeah, new project coming up. Yeah. So, there's, there was a lot of comments saying, wow, can see the different tones, love the color indicators, brilliant. Woohoo. Some saying hi to each other. Hi Didi, hello, hi Huda. Hi, tablecloth is so nice. Tablecloth so cantik. Everyone love your tablecloth. Yes. The tablecloth uh, is super. Tablecloth. Camping at Rimba Ilmu someday. Oh my god, can we? Can <laughs> we? But, it's just susah sikit lah. Okay. But, yeah. Hmm. No, no, we go to your place then. What the warriors. Photo Warriors, ah, Airbnb. Airbnb? <laughs> Bonfire. Uh, we, we ask off topic, but have you tried chlorophyll printing? I've accidentally tried chlorophyll printing, <laughs> which which I will show you later okay. on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lagi, uh, Kaishan asked what paper did you use for the sun printing? Um, You can use any paper, actually but preferably something that is thick enough so that it doesn't get koya when you go under water, when you do the developing process. So uh, I prefer to use 300 GSM paper and ho preferably cellulose paper. No, I think it's called what? Uh, cold pressed. Yeah, because my friend tried the other non-cold press and it turns out differently. So just use 300 GSM watercolor paper, cold press. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. You can use fabric, but make sure it's more organic. Uh, and you wash it so that you make sure all the wax is uh, clean off. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if Bakis has answered your question, you say, yeah, thank you, Bakis, for answering the question. Or no, I'm still confused. Yeah, just, just write in a comment. No, it's kind of us. Are there any detriments of the processes like chemical harm? Ke? Also, you mentioned turmeric, but is there a domestic substance that is effective too? Maybe it in its symbolism. High case. <laughs> okay. Um, detriment of the process. Oh God. Uh, what do you mean by detriments? Huh? <laughs> is it um? Oh, okay. Um. Chemical harm. Well, to the environment, I would say yes, because it has a few, um, it has cyanide, it has ammonium inside it. So what I recommend is to uh, to dispose it uh, responsibly, which means that you flush it down the toilet, because that will straight go straight away to the sewage system. That's as far as what I do. Um, yeah, because if you, like, say, throw it in a normal sink, it might go back to the, you know, drainage outside of your house. And that might have its own, destroy another different ecology or a puddle of water where the fish, small fish, anything, you know. Mm -hmm. On that, yeah. So, yeah, just flush it. And um, is there, you mentioned tumor. But is there a domestic substance that is effective too? Uh, you have to research it online. 
I know you can probably use blueberry. You can use, um, I don't know about Kobe's though, red cabbage, maybe. Uh, maybe carrots, if I'm mistaken. But you need to have a high concentration of the said plant or, or fruit. Yeah. And in its symbolism, yeah, there's a lot of symbolism in art, in nature, in general. <laughs> yeah, which I can go on about it for another two hours. <laughs> next, next, next session, symbolism in art with Balkis Tajali. Oh my god. <laughs> I want, I want to <laughs> talking about Okay, so Hana asked a question that probably could be answered when you do your studio tour later. Using natural mm -hmm. dye like turmeric and onion, is there any any way, chemically perhaps, to ensure that it does not degrade? Okay. Um, I can answer that now for cyanotype. If it degrades, if the it may be um, it turns like this, brownish, instead of the original blue. What you can do is just put this in between the books. I don't have a book, but imagine this is a book, and then you just press it. And then maybe in a few days, you pick it out later, and it'll be just good. So what that means is actually um, it degrades because of the acidic in the air. So when you press it in between the books, it would absorb the acidicity, acidicity, or oh, whatever. <laughs> and then it will return back. <laughs> yeah, so that's what makes cyanotype a good archival for photographic prints. But if you use antotype or another organic um, chemicals, oh no, organic substance, it would degrade and it won't be good. La. It only lasts... Um, for like, I don't know, maybe a month, a year, if you take care of it. But again, nature is ephemeral, is temporary, so you can enjoy the philosophy of living in the moment of making it. My <laughs> life quotes from Malkis today. It's very nice. <laughs> Last session. Uh, San Snoa, please tell me if I'm pronouncing it correct or not. If I did it on a shirt, will it be faded if washed? Um, um, okay, that's, if you read um, the principle of natural dye, or just dyeing in general, you need things like a mordant and a fixer to actually bite the ink on the surface. When you say bite, is that means you that can wash off lah when you... Uh, go hand wash or washing in under washing machine and it would um, not um, uh, it would bite the color it would fix the color on the surface so there's mordant and then there's fixer um, so what you need to do if you want to do it on your shirt is you make sure it's 100% cotton or 100% linen any organic um, textile um, you wash and then you can Soak your shirt inside a bath of diluted alum, tawas. So it's a kind of a salt, actually. So if you want an alternative, um, eco-friendly version, you use your soy milk. Soak it under soy milk for a couple of days. One day lah, 24 hours. Yeah. So then it would actually be already like a good mordant, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So then you can uh, leave it to dry and then use cyanotype on it. But don't wash it with your other normal clothes because I can't guarantee the chemical would, you know, it would ha it would go and skip onto your other clothes. So wash and dry cleaning. I don't know, just hand wash. Yeah. Preferably don't wash at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let your, all your sweat, all the cut on the bedroom. Yeah, you can use it for um, there, there are some, some questions in, but uh, let's let's go and start doing the tour first and then we'll go to, to the questions asked. Yeah. Jom, tengok yeah. studio tour, Baki's punya studio. Yes, <laughs> we're on, you know, the wall of the house. Okay. So, this is where the magic happens just now. 
And yeah, this is where I do all my sunprint works and my second project, which is making my own plant ink. Okay, I'll just do outro books with my dad's sunprint outside. Mm, all dye stuff right behind. Uh, my mom used to teach art in high school, so we have a lot of batik materials behind. Uh, I'm a handy person, so I have all my oils, <laughs> my minyak hitam up there. <laughs> no lah, just kidding. That one is after service. Um, yeah. All my cooking ink utensils. This is the gelam tikus that I showed yesterday. So I'm trying to like much done and then add gum arabic to create the texture of the paint. Mm, yeah, some of the things if you want to do your own ink, have your soda ash, your gum arabic, salt. Mm, oh yeah, talking about chlorophyll, do you know that all plants that are green, or maybe I'm wrong, some the plants that are green all has their own chlorophyll, right? That's the color that makes it green. Is it? To that shoe. Uh, 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 anyone? The plant people, can you clarify this? Thank you very much. So this is uh, the first ink that I made uh, using pandan. Um, this is what it turned out. This lovely kaya color. And yeah, there is actually sediments below here, if you can see it. So you need to shake it before you use it. And this is the second test. Um, I actually boiled the pandan first, and then I blended it. So the color becomes actually more brighter than the other kaya. Kaya ink, pandan ink. Uh, there are answers. Plants have the chlorophyll. I mean, uh, I think so. But what Balkis mean is that each this species of plant has their own concentration of chlorophyll. Is it? Is it correct? Is it uh, what you are trying to say, Balkis? Um. Yes. Yes. So, um, what I read or understand about chlorophyll printing or chlorophyll test is that um, oh god, I, I might, I might um quote this wrong, but. Um, what, oh, something like this, contohnya. What I've seen is, I drop one drops of um, diluted pandan ink here, but then you slowly see that some of the um, ink, uh, some of the chlorophyll actually move upwards. So the pure form of chlorophyll is actually the ones on here, on the periphery. Uh, but I might be wrong. So this might not be the perfect test for chlorophyll, but... This is what I assume um, chlorophyll printing in this kind of alternative process. Yeah. So this is some of the paintings that I did. So it's edible, definitely, but got vinegar inside. I'm not too sure <laughs> if it's a dark light. You have to put your own sugar. <laughs> <then you make. laughs> yeah. Ta-da. So all this like stickiness, you is actually all from gum arabic. That's a good binder for that. So it binds the pigments inside the pandan to the binder um, gum arabic. Yeah. And I'll bring you guys to see a temporary exhibition. <laughs> wow, nice. Right. So this is the sun print kit that I'm uh, curating. So you can buy it from me or you can make your own and find it in Shopee on its own. Um, yeah. Okay, it's a bit dark here, but this is some prints that I did on Kipa. Mm, yeah, other plants. Some leaves that are eaten by caterpillars and other insects is definitely more beautiful. This is the bamboo, the lovely ferns, and uh, yeah, so I've been testing it on 
uh, also other cotton. This is synthetic cotton. But the quality is not so good. So I had to actually wash it quickly so that I don't um, wash the whole blue out. And there's some of the prints that I'll be selling for a charity art sale later on in this month. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. This is my garden. From here is cantik. Pergi dekat-dekat, you know tak, tak potong rumput lah. <laughs> tak. <laughs> tak <minta. laughs> yeah. So I have my bunga telang right up there. It's hard to take the bunga telang for my next ink project, but I'm slowly <laughs> trying to uh, forage for at least 500 gram before I do my own ink. Or if you want to donate some ink, some plants of your own, please do. <laughs> yeah. So that's the short tool. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going for long. Yep, yep. That's that. You want to see the process of the ink? How do you do the ink? It fell, fell down. You have more questions? So we have a lot of questions, but I think so. We would uh, we might run out of time answering. That. There's five questions um, pending. Uh, before 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 we suddenly like panic to end like what happened with the previous two talks. <laughs> uh, do you mind if we do like another live session like right after this in case if we run out of time? Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't mind. Yeah. So for those who like in case we run out of time, uh, come back later. Just, yeah. just a few seconds, uh, not, just re-on balik the live because we only have like one hour period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, Anna, eh, soalan tadi, does somebody ask, are there restrictions to bring solution on plane? Um, restricted. I don't know if there is somebody here from the authority <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> hmm. Um, uh, you can bring it quick into your luggage bag, right? The one that you checked in. I'm just saying, make sure you don't label it as a hydrogen peroxide, as a ferric ammonium citrate and everything. <laughs> you don't label it, you wrap it <laughs> nice and say, oh, it's a bottle of shampoo. You know. Yeah. Okay, now the next question from myself. Should I post this up on YouTube? <laughs> Are you asking it? Huh? YouTube? Yeah, because all the videos uh, will be posted out on YouTube. <laughs> but doesn't doesn't mean you need to follow. <laughs> yeah. So basically, just, just to answer that question, uh, there are restrictions lah. So, uh, you um, but I would say to be a good girl, be a good boy, what you can do is actually just uh, pre-sensitize your paper um, and then you keep it in a, in a dark container or in a bag of um, a sealed bag uh, and it will be good for like about a week. So yeah, and then you can bring it during your travel. You don't need to like, oh, you know, mix one-to-one -one and all that. You just bring this, you uh, bring your the bag up, uh, to keep it covered and you make sure you have, you go out, you take your plants and um, I don't know, have a frame, bring a small frame and you can do something while you're traveling. Yeah. That's, that's so, the yeah. That's the yeah. method. Yeah. Quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going to more questions. Let me uh, book out the question box for a few. So, uh, Nurul Huda, MR, asked, what's the acid solution? Acid, okay. If you want to use something in your kitchen, you can use apple cider, cuka buatan, lemon juice, limau kasturi juice. I don't know about asam jawa. Is it juicy? Is it citric acid? Uh, maybe not. Just use the first 
for suggestions. And yeah, you can make asset solution already. Mm. Okay, there, there's quite brutal questions from uh, one person. There's three questions, three brutal questions for you. <laughs> Okay, uh, macam mana soalan ni panjang sangat nak, nak buka dia uh, Okay, I think so this question is too long that it became dot 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 I have no idea how to open it but I'll just read whatever is there Is Sinotype a recognized creation process in the fine art world? Are there any famous Sinotype artists? If no, do you think it has a good potential in being seen? I think so it means seen Yeah um. Is among the photographs. Um, so, this is my own observation. Ah, jangan kuat on this officially. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of like all these photographer going back into sun printing, and then they use like their old uh, negative films. They use nature um uh, as their subject. So it's kind of like you know, or I am what sign type. Ni macam orang uh, chill, not to say chill, like <laughs> totally taking their time lah. Yeah, they're not out to chase anything. Um, but there are like young um, Sinotype artists, um, designers that are experimenting a lot with Sinotype. So there is actually this um, technique called wet cyanotype. So you can wet it with acidic solution, with um, even, I would say, a metallic solution. So you will create this beautiful colors, beautiful reaction. So, yeah, that's been, I guess, uh, something that, that I've seen a lot in my feed. Lah. Maybe it's the algorithm, who knows, but just hashtag phenotype and you will see many, many artists, many, many artworks that has been doing phenotype since Azali since eighteen <laughs> Yeah. Okay. What what's the sun print art scene like in Malaysia? Are there many artists here that do cyanotype? What is the question? Um, through cyanotype remember her name. Uh, participating in her workshop in Kongsi KL uh, is an art um, and performing arts uh, warehouse, performing space. Um, yeah, there I, there is a few. Um, try and um, look for it. Or maybe I can link it up later. Hmm. Well, not mainly on Sinotype, lah, so I'm not too sure. But so far, um, I've been like typing Neotype, Malaysia, there's a few artists, um, old timers. When I say old timers, they are young but have doing this for more than years plus. Um, they are, oh my god, I don't, I don't remember their name, but they've been going out to um, a hutan somewhere in Selangor. So it's kind of like a conservative and um, it's kind of like, I feel like it's an art activism because they went to the uh, one of the peak of the mount of the Bukit hiking area there to actually stop the deforestation that is going on. So they bring uh, kids, uh, families to actually come and see the detrimental condition of the forest um, somewhere in um, Kuala Selangor, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that that is cool. That is something that um, I feel personally while I take on take on sunprint or cyanotype is that creates this interaction, this communication with the people as well as you bring in the art, the nature as the subject, yeah. So, yeah, it's... Can I make your thoughts <laughs> What's the question again? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, the some print art scene in Malaysia. Uh, I, yeah, there's, there's not many, but... I'm sure once we find one person, that one person can lead you to another different artist. Yeah. I don't know so, what the word. It started off with you and now Rimba like know quite a few <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, one. Networking, one. Networking. Networking, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But there is actually one uh, quite uh, well-known uh, Sinotype artist that 
often comes to Malaysia. I think she's a Hong Kong artist, Lai Garling. So yeah, you can also look into her art uh, or her Instagram profile, Lai Garling. Yeah. Can you type type that in the comment? Yes. Um, yeah. Like and what she does more like a vintage um subjects. So she uses a lot of like um lacy um clothes, um one of the old vintage memorabilia to take um, the negative of the image and then she placed it um the paper. She worked with the community um old folks home you know yeah so the possibility of endless you have to be reaching out to other people getting people to be more active more involved in nature and each other yeah mm. and speaking of the negative phone there's another question uh which is uh saw in passing people creating cyanotype out of negative films. Have you ever tried that? Um, I have tried with very little test. And maybe it's because I DIY my own negatives. I just take a transparency and then just draw on it. Um, I've tried printing on ink jets, but ink jet is not good. I think you need um, uh, ink jet. Uh, you need um, you need the photocopy paper, the big machine. You need that kind of um, ink. I think it's called pigment ink. Pigment ink. Yeah. So you need a, a more stronger printing to actually get a good negatives. So a good negatives definitely gives you more good image. But I don't want to try it at least at the moment because I feel that. We have a lot more other subjects that we can focus on, such as nature, natural objects. So at the moment, no, not yet. Yeah. Until I can find an alternative. Yeah. All right. So um, one minute left remaining. Uh, <laughs> there are some questions in. Uh, we will continue in the next slide like in a few seconds. So I'm going to end the session. Those who are here who would like to continue watching, uh, wait, just, just come back later. Okay, so uh, before this thing ends, I'll just end it first. Before it okay. rejects me, I'll reject this thing first. Right. So, see you in the next live. Yes. Right, okay. Yes.